the image of most Americans is, well, gee, we're buying all these things in China, but what are we actually selling to the Chinese? What are they getting from us? And then let's, let's transport ourselves. Let's go from Washington, D.C. Let's settle ourselves in Beijing. And you walk around Beijing, what do you see? You see American brand names everywhere. And they just start off with the most common things. McDonald's, every major street. Kentucky Fried Chicken, probably one of the most popular restaurants in China. Pizza Hut, essentially restaurants, retailers, education services. You'd be surprised how many, for example, bilingual high schools and junior high schools are emerging in Beijing and major cities because everyone wants to be now fluent in both Chinese and in English. So many, many parents are actually putting their students in bilingual schools. They're pulling them out of the pure Chinese medium. So that's one area. You look at the hotels, they're all American brand names. The Marriott's, the St. Moritz's, the Hilton's, they're everywhere. American consumer goods brand names, they're, they're everywhere. Now the funny thing here is, much of this is services oriented. And much of these buildings and these goods that are being produced or these services being provided, these restaurants, these hotels, these are American businesses based upon a franchise. So here, America actually has the best of all worlds. It doesn't actually invest a lot in terms of dollars in China, but it generates tremendous profits in China. Now, there are some American companies who are actually manufacturing and expanding their market. So you're gonna see both what I call a combination of manufacturing for certain specialized products, as well as the services. And it's the services actually, which is really the future. Because what will you see in China in the future? A large middle class becoming affluent. What do they want? Better education services, health services, financial services, architectural services, engineering services. You just think about what America's strengths are. One of the great strengths of America is financial services. It's basically New York, the hedge funds, the insurance companies, the equity, the private investment. So if China liberalizes these activities, American businesses will find a tremendous niche. After all, the tremendous wealth being generated in China. Here's a country which saves 50% of their income. Americans save maybe 10% overall. So what do they do with this? Actually, for many of them, they don't know what to do with it. They're buying apartments and houses in China. They're starting to buy apartments and houses elsewhere, in New York and San Francisco and Australia and Europe. But even that cannot satisfy the tremendous amount of savings which has been pent up. And this is basically financial products, new, new options for savings, insurance products. These are all activities or products which America has a very strong uh, capacity. There's another huge area where Chinese health services are going into. And assistant living, senior living. This is an aging society. The population is actually shrinking. The numbers of people over the age of 60 is soaring. They're no longer going to be able to live with their kids because these are one child families. They're going to need nursing services and the infrastructure and the know-how that America is very familiar with. So these are, these are other kinds of activities. These are all areas where America has the best. And this is the market for the United States. Can they get into these sectors? Can they start developing uh, brand names and product lines which Chinese, the broad masses of Chinese could benefit from?